All right, third time's the charm. Welcome, carbohydrates, friend or phone. I said third time's the charm because I forgot how to record. Uh, all right, so it's the elephant in our kitchen, carbohydrates. And you all know it is because we're told carbs, carbs, carbs going to do this to you. They're going to make you, you right. Everything, everything evil is due to carbohydrates. And so are they our friend or our foe? So we put caution tape around it. And I do actually agree with this picture because those carbohydrates, probably we should use caution around. That is highly processed white flour, which means we took this beautiful grain and one, we modified it in the more recent couple decades, but we took it and we highly refined it, which means we pulled out all the good nutrients in it. And then we added a few nutrients that we decided were important. And then we, we market it for really cheap. That's a picture of young Joey and Joey and I, we pretty much eat carbohydrates. That's probably over 80% of our diet. And most people would be like, but, but where are you getting your protein? Oh, it's there. And so yes, keto or whatever you want to call it, the Atkins, they keep changing the name of the diet. Right now, I think we still call it keto. Says the problem's the bun. And they're right, that's a highly processed bun. But there's other problems. We'll get to the other problems weekly. We're focusing on carbs right now. And so are carbohydrates the elephant in the kitchen? Those are carbohydrates there. The celery and the peanut butter. Both really good for you, depending on what type of peanut butter you buy. Let's talk about that. So just a reminder, you should have or should be turning in your broccoli uh, challenge from the first week. So a couple things with the broccoli. One is you're supposed to make a recipe with the broccoli. And just a reminder, you're supposed to take a picture of your broccoli recipe, ideally with yourself in there. And so I mentioned that because there's always a blip in the first week that a lot of you are like, I already submitted it or I already ate it and I didn't take the selfie. So there is some forgiveness this week. There isn't in future weeks. So please make sure you take a picture of whatever you make with the broccoli or if you're not a broccoli fan and you went with kale, whatever cruciferous you did, please make sure you're in the picture uh, and if you haven't taken your picture yet, please make sure you're in the picture. It's right. It helps to keep us all honest. Uh, and I should have put there uh, the healthy broccoli recipe. So there's ways to make really unhealthy broccoli. We can take anything that's healthy from Mother Nature uh, and cover it with things that are not healthy. Uh, in addition to that, the, the, the assignment has several parts. And I want to mention that because some people turn in their assignment and forget that there's other parts. So each part is eight points. Um, and so you make a recipe, you share the recipe and your thoughts on the recipe. Hey, I really loved it. My whole family loved it. And we're going to make this again. Uh, a summary of what you did for five days. So how you incorporated broccoli into your life for five days. Uh, and you can, everybody does this in different ways. Every future one is going to be seven days, so it's going to be a whole week. But since we had that three-day intro um, where you weren't supposed to modify your diet, uh, some of you were already eating broccoli, which was awesome. And also, you had to watch a video, or you have to if you haven't done that, uh, called the DNA Whisper. It's a TED Talk. It's really cool. And write your thoughts on that, what you learned, and your thoughts, so a solid paragraph when I'm saying, how do you think about it? I'm not looking for one sentence. You guys, we're in college, not first grade. So a solid paragraph is more than one or two sentences. So what you learn, so something cool you learn from the video, um, any inspiration also. And then also uh, to Google, find a scientific study or a discussion about the benefits of broccoli and heart health or brain health or whatever. There's really, it's such a simple assignment. Um, please make sure if, to always put the reference to where you got that from. So some people will find it in a very sciencey journal because some of you are much better at that research. And some of you, um, it just depends how your search engine is. I did not make your broccoli muffins or perhaps I did depending on what year this is. If you're watching this video, then you missed out on it. And 
Uh, that is a picture, though, from a student I had uh, one term, and she sent me this picture uh, to show me that her young son, who had never had broccoli before, like she went out and bought broccoli, and she was amazed. He loved it. I swear, I also get to tell you the story if I forgot about when Joey and I were in China and we went to one of those hole in the wall restaurants um, that are the best restaurants that they tell you never to go to. And Joey ate all the tops of the broccoli, the flower part off of my garlic broccoli uh, and left me the stems and everybody from the streets, everybody from the restaurant came out and was watching. Uh, nobody spoke English. And they just went out on the streets in the alleyway. We went back to this restaurant three times because the food was phenomenal. It was authentic. And when we walked in, they would just know who we were and they would go and get me my garlic broccoli. It was like they were waiting and everybody come and just watch as this young boy would eat all the flowers off my broccoli. All right. So why did I want you to eat broccoli? And why do I want you to continue eating broccoli? Well, uh, and not with that way to be with thumbs up saying, yeah, I like broccoli and finding your way. Some of you, maybe it was raw. Some of you, you'd cook it, whoever it was. But to eat broccoli, you have to chew. You really, even my dog, dogs love broccoli. It's really healthy for dogs. Didn't know that. To eat broccoli, they eat it raw um, and you have to chew it. You can't just swallow it whole. And that's because it's loaded with fiber. This would be true also of carrots or anything that's loaded with fiber. Fiber is a carbohydrate. And we'll be talking about that more in the second lecture on this, but right now. Um, and so fiber is something that fills up, gastric means our stomach. So it fills up our stomach. And so it slows down what's going on in our stomach, which is a good thing, as opposed to processed food, uh, which is this man-made food, that doesn't happen. Everything goes through really quick. Satiate means it makes you full. This is important because that increases the absorption of nutrients because it's slowing down things in our upper digestive tract. And so one of the things that we talk about and you'll be doing for the next couple of weeks as part of your assignment is you'll be evaluating food labels, not a whole food of broccoli, but a processed food. Uh, and so that would be somebody jokingly made a food label of broccoli. And as I talked about in our is a calorie calorie talk, uh, um, the calories in whole food is not the same as calories in processed food. Calories in processed food, you could count. Calories in whole food come with fiber. So if you look on that label, there's actually twice as much fiber as sugar, and that's all natural sugar. Look at all that potassium in there. That's huge. There's so much potassium in broccoli. But um, And there's also, oh, look at that, protein. Holy moly, there's a lot of protein. And that's only a cup of broccoli, a cup. Who knew? People are always saying, where do you get your protein from? Where do you enjoy get your protein from? Um, the reason I show this, actually, let's go back, <coughs> excuse me, is one of the fallacies I have with food labels is somebody somewhere decided we would only list certain things like vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, uh, and how much is in there. And there are a whole bunch of other nutrients. And so this label, this is from some magazine. And they're listing a whole bunch of other nutrients. Uh, and we'll get to nutrients. What they're lacking is all the micronutrients that are specific to broccoli, like sulforaphane and stuff that you only get when it's the whole food. Taking as a tablet does not do the same thing. Oh, okay, let's try that again. Uh, it's slowing down the absorption. So the nutrients are getting absorbed, but because of all that fiber that's in there, the glucose, the sugar that is not straight sugar, we're talking about that. Uh, it's it's made it's a polysaccharide. It's a long polymer of sugars. Um, is going to be slowly released and absorbed. SI is your small intestines, as opposed to processed food where absorption of glucose of sugar is happening super fast because it's not packaged with the fiber. There's no way we can package it the way Mother Nature does. 
uh, decreases bowel transit time. And what that means is that you're going to poop. So the upper digestive tract, eating whole foods that are high in fiber, your vegetables, your fruit, is going to slow down the upper digestive. So slow down absorption, which helps to increase absorption of nutrients while speeding up the lower digestive tract so that you have bowel movements. And so Brenna, uh, I put this in there for you. I just could not believe this is a real book um, that's out there for you to read to your children. And so Softy is the name of the bowel. So we'll be talking about fiber um, the next lecture and we'll come back to this slide and talk about a little bit more, but it bulks up your stools. Uh, there's two different types of fiber. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but broccoli is the insoluble fiber that helps to bulk up your stools, uh, which also helps to lower your exposure to toxins. Endotoxins are toxins that are naturally in stuff, which would be the estrogens. Uh, it also binds to bile and we'll talk about cholesterol in a week or two. Uh, and so this is the other type of fiber, but really to me, this is so silly, soluble, insoluble, it's eat real food. Um, so fruit, vegetables, oats, barley, legumes are really good at binding to cholesterol and decreasing your cholesterol. And to me, this is the biggest. Um, and that, there you go. It's like one of the things you had to do for your broccoli assignment was find a study. And this one specifically about the microbiota which is all that bacteria I mentioned that lives in your digestive tract all throughout. You have all different types throughout. And we'll be talking about a lot this term. This is a huge uh, field of study. More in the next lesson, actually, when we talk about fake sugars, but real food um, that's naturally high in fiber feeds your microbiome. And so, and your microbiome is what then feeds you. And so half of the nutrients, um, of the of the macronutrients in the carbohydrates uh, in broccoli are actually going through you and feeding your microbiome because the fiber is bound to it. And so that's just a picture of your happy bacteria. It wants the nuts, the legumes, the seeds, the grains, the real food. And they're kind of looking at this other guy because when you're eating highly processed food, your microbiome dies off and you start getting an unhealthy one. All right. So if you never eat your veggies, well, you're not going to poop. You're going to be, you're going to feel crappy because you're full of crap. And so you're going to be constipated and that's going to change your bowel movements. And if you want to know more about that, well, we'll get to that. Uh, and so, right, you're feeling crappy and you're feeling angry or you're feeling really sluggish and can't get, you've all been there, done that, Just eat your veggies. Uh, and so that is me going way too fast again is that cartoon that says, we're talking about carbohydrates, elephant in the kitchen, because of this cartoon. This is from like 20, 2004. This fad of low carbs has been around. There's so many, the South Beach diet, how many diets are about low carbs? And I did, I, I was probably back in this year and I had never heard of this. And I, I got a book and I like was following it and I, yeah, it didn't do it very long. And I'm like, this is so wrong. Um, so hopefully over this term, I convince you there are different types of carbohydrates. That is the most beautiful purple, highly processed sugar rose I've ever seen. Um, and all of that is highly processed sugar. So somebody gives you a cupcake that looks like that. You can say, thank you. Oh, what a beautiful thought. It doesn't mean you have to eat it. You could probably leave it on your desk and probably nothing will happen to it forever. Uh, I don't know. The ants might eventually come. So let's look at some stats. And so if we look back 120 years ago, 80%, 85% of our calories in the U.S. were carbohydrate, of which at least 75% were complex, meaning uh, real food, whole grains, whole everything. We didn't have processed food yet. And then if we jump 100 years, it's cut in half. Half of our calories are now carbohydrates. And most of them are simple carbs. This number has gotten worse. So I was looking for more recent statistics. 
and I I do have a little bit, it's hard to find more recent statistics. If we go to a country that a third world or developing country like Nepal, and again, my name, I have a, a huge connection to Nepal, they still eat like we did back 120 years ago. So like your great grandparents and or great great grandparents um, that they're eating the rice and lentils. So let's look at added sweetener because this is the carbs that deserve the bad name. Uh, in 1830, so we're going back even further, the average intake of added sweetener per year per person was like seven and a half pounds. And so you can go to the store and buy a 10 pound bag of sugar. That was over the whole year. This was a luxury item. Um, and so that was two cubes of sugar a day. It's hard for me to believe it was that much, but, um, and so we do see our sugar consumption. This is not carbohydrate consumption. This is sugar consumption has just gone up since that time of 1820, 1830, uh, just skyrocketed as we learned how to process sugar and get it out of the sugar cane and sugar beets. And so we fast forward to the year 2000 and it becomes 45 cubes a day. So if you're in class, I do have actually a visual, a bag with two cubes and a bag with 45 cubes of sugar. Um, the reason I don't have a more recent number is the number has actually decreased very slightly. It might be now like 42 cubes, 40 cubes, uh, and it's all different types of sugar. And we'll be talking about that. Uh, so this is in 2008, it was about 19 teaspoons of sucrose, which is the white sugar. Um, brown sugar is gonna be the same thing. And depending on the person, 40 to 60 pounds of high fructose corn syrup. Um, which is the liquid form of it. And this is per person, per day. This is insane. Oh, the fructose, sorry. The 19 teaspoons is probably per day, the 65 to 100 pounds, and then the high fructose is per year, per person. Uh, and we're not the, yeah, I told you we're not number one. There's other countries with much sweeter tooths. And I did, Try to find a more recent one. And this actually, I thought this graph speaks for itself and hopefully makes you take a moment and say, wait a second, that's not what I'm being told. So our carbohydrate intake has actually decreased. If you look around 2000 is when it starts plummeting. It's when all these keto type diets become really the fad and it's decreased. And the rates of obesity as we know, after it's it's skyrocketing, it keeps going up and it's actually more in an exponential than this nice linear graph is showing. So our carbohydrate consumption, um, even though it's decreasing, why is obesity increasing? And it has to do with the types of carbs. Um, and there we go. And it's not just soda anymore. Uh, that top shelf, as I talked about, is, yeah, and this is, average person is taking in a soda or some type of sugary beverage every day. Uh, and so that would be more the coffees, uh, the energy drinks. And we are into week two. So a lot of you maybe did for your first with the broccoli, you were supposed to cut some kind of crap out. You can switch this week. You're going to be cutting the crap out again. So you can switch to a different crap and maybe even do it for the whole month. Uh, so our our store, there's not just one row of crap, highly processed. This is pure sugar. There's nothing healthy in there. There is all those chips, all the crackers, uh, all the cookie aisle, um, and the cereals. They've actually come out with probably the unhealthiest thing in your kitchen might be the processed breakfast cereal. Don't tell General Mills that I said that though. And this is what the average shopping cart looks like. Really look at your shopping cart. Don't judge yourself, but take a deep breath and look in your cabinet. Look at shopping carts. It's all processed food. Or, you know, if you live by yourself and use the basket, it's all processed 
food and all around you in the aisles, even in the cold section, right? The refrigerated section, it's all processed food, processed dinners that you can just throw in the microwave. And we're ending up like this guy with absolutely no energy. My goal throughout the term, I do not expect to do this in one week, is that your shopping cart starts to look like mine, which is it's whole food. And some people are like, but it costs so much. Really? Because I've looked at how much the bill is for that highly processed food. And we're talking about not just the bill at the grocery store, which it is more everywhere it's more, but the cost on your energy level, on your sleep, and on your overall health and your emotions. And we get to that. I have a slide on that. So back to talking about carbs, there's Chubby Joey. Uh, we were in, this is Bryce Canyon, for those of you who've ever been to Southern Utah, and we went snowshoeing for the first time. Um, you need carbohydrates because they are your energy source. That is what blood glucose is all about. It is feeding all your cells so you have energy to get around. But not all carbs are the same. And so that is the pictures I promised you because I am a chemist of glucose. Those of you who take biochemistry with me or have, that should look familiar. Uh, so those zigzag corners, and I don't have a laser here, um, are carbons. So they're called carbohydrates because there's a carbon. So there's six carbons here. So every corner doesn't show something, every zig or zag. And then the O's are oxygen and the H. So it's carbons with water. Every carbon has an oxygen on it. Uh, the other H's are just not shown. And this is glucose, the most important molecule in your body. It is your energy. Uh, it is what your blood cells carry around as well as the oxygen to every cell in your body. It is what your blood cells consume so they can travel around. And blood sugar has an evil name to it because we talk about, oh, my blood sugar is too low and that's hypoglycemia. So low glycemia is sugar, meaning specifically blood glucose because that's what we measure. Uh, and high blood sugar hyperglycemia, which is uh, diabetes. And um, it's fascinating because so a lot of people be like, oh, I'm feeling dizzy. I need to eat. I need to eat. Uh, your body actually often will compensate, but let's see where it goes. So we talk about sugar. We talk about carbohydrates. I do need to talk about diabetes. And this, this hits close to home because um, my bestest friend uh, has um, type two diabetes is we, we just saw a chiropractor the other day, who's been helping a lot with nutritional stuff for the past year. And, and something I really liked how she phrased it is it's not her pancreas as pancreas is useless. It says pancreas is kind of taking a time out asleep and we need to do stuff to support the pancreas, to support the liver. Cause it also has to do with your liver. So they're being overworked and they're kind of, they're fatigued. It's kind of like we all have, we need a time out. I just give me a few moments to rest. And so she's giving him stuff to help support um, things so that they can start working again and are working more efficiently. Uh, so diabetes is abbreviated as DM and charting and stuff. And so the picture there, we see the US is just becoming higher and higher rates of diabetes. And yes, there are different types of diabetes. There's actually now considered three types. So type one diabetes is where they say the pancreas can no longer make insulin. Um, those are pretty strong words. Type two is where the, the pancreas is making insulin, but the cells are not responding to the insulin. So in the upper right-hand corner, 1958, it was estimated about uh, one and a half million Americans. And in 2010, we're getting above almost the 26 million. It's much higher now and it just keeps going up. Um, so this is again, 2010, 8% of the population. And it's higher because a lot of people don't know. And this is type two diabetes, um, which accounts for over 95% of diabetes. Type three, I had never heard of this. Um, I learned this from a student whose father had been diagnosed with this. And that's fascinating me. So type one was traditionally called juvenile onset diabetes. 
except that um, type 1 diabetes really historically did not show up until you were much older. Uh, and it is that something happens and the pancreas is not working as efficiently. Uh, the two biggest causes are either a virus. And so, yes, coronavirus caused diabetes. That's what happened to my friend. Uh, but his, his pancreas is healing and it is working. It's just resting right now because of other things going on. Um, and type two is called adult onset. They stopped calling it adult onset and they now call it uh, non-insulin dependent diabetes uh, because they're saying it's not insulin dependent and it's because it's showing up in young children and like eight year olds are showing up and it's because our diet is so messed up. Um, and again, this is the number of people in that lower one, it says ages 20 plus that were diagnosed. Um, it's really sad for, and, and I'll talk about that throughout this week and some of the documentaries you get to watch in the second week. They all talk about this issue. The lower left-hand corner talks about um, the real effect of diabetes, which is on our healthcare system. These numbers are older, it's much worse. And we've kind of, um, overlook this because we had the coronavirus. Uh, and this is, I show this because there's actually a correlation with happiness. And so it's really, where's the cause and effect and what is the true root of happiness? Um, something to ponder. All right, so blue was a good thing, you were happy. And those were also states with the lower diabetes, the lower obesity and stuff. This is a picture it shows you where we're not actually the worst. This is, yeah, from 2014. It's, it's really not pretty because there is a lot more that are deep, dark red. But again, the deep, dark reds uh, and the orange are the affluent states. I have a picture on a later slide um, that is more recent. And it is that this has become, it is the pandemic. Uh, that we should be talking about again, uh, which is it is a disease of affluence, which means of money. Uh, and so this is from Dr. Greger. He said it should be called the Black Plague of the 21st century, that instead of the causative agent being this, uh, the plague, the bubonic plague, and the transferring it is the fleas and rats. And by the way, bubonic plague is back. But the pathological agent is our consumption of too much fat and too many calories. Wait a second. That says fat. Is that a typo? No, it is not. It is our high fat diet. Um, and I'm going to dare to say it. It is also our high animal-based diet diet. It has been shown for over a hundred years that this is what the cause of diabetes. The high blood sugar is the effect. And so we have erroneously said carbohydrates are high in glucose. So that is why your sugar in your blood is high. It turns out that's not. High processed food is a whole different thing though. We'll get to that. Um, so again, high blood Glucose, blue is just my abbreviation, the cause. Yeah, the advertisements, the enticements. And this, I made this slide before. I, I, you know, I have a phone like all of you. I had no idea the apps that these advertisers go out there and do. And so most of you probably do have apps for uh, whatever, Dutch Bros and Taco Bell and all these places on your phone that say that, that entice you to keep going back there. Hey, we're going to give you a free drink after you have 10 million calories from us and have clogged up all of your insulin receptors, right? We always talk about clogging up your arteries. You're clogging up your insulin receptors with the animal-based food, the high fat food. Uh, and that is what this word means. So intra means within, myo means muscles, lipid means fat, but the fat is getting in there in between your muscles and it's just clogging them up. It's like putting bubble gum in your insulin receptor. So if you put bubble gum into the lock in your car, well, not your car, your, your front door, right? That 
you can't put the key in there. So insulin never enters the cell. Insulin is a hormone. It just, it tells, it has to bind to receptor and say, food, there's food, take the glucose in. And this, the high fat, high animal-based product, it's been known again. There's been studies done for over a hundred years. They took people, it was back in, it was either the twenties or the forties. And I apologize, this was in Dr. Campbell's book. Um, and they, they took these people who were diabetic. So this is back before processed food. And they put half of them on a diet that was low carbs. And they, they checked them to see how things were going. And the other ones, they actually put them with nurses because they were sure they were gonna kill them within a few days. And they put them on a high carbohydrate, high, right? There wasn't refined food yet. So it was um, high in whole foods and low in fat and low in animal, low protein, low fat diet. And they were sure those people, they were gonna like put them out of control in diabetes and those people thrived. They actually got their diabetes under control and they were on, I, I'm pretty sure these were type one diabetes because type two was not very prevalent. Um, and the people though, they put on the high fat, high animal based diets, low carbohydrates, their diabetes went out of control really fast. Like this is in, this is like a month long study in within and they, they, I'm pretty sure may have switched them the two groups and they saw that that's what was happening. And this has been repeated. It's been repeated in the animals. Um, if you decrease the fat, you decrease the animal products, you actually control the diabetes. You can actually, diabetes is not a lifetime. And this is a sad statistic because so many children are now being diagnosed. Uh, the thing is, is again, and it's, it's my theme also besides eating real, when you start eating real, high vibrational food, which is real food, your body heals and these statistics go away. So the sweetest tooth, it's not as, there we go. I promise this. Uh, so this is 2009 and the deep darker colors are the places with the sweetest tooth. They also have the highest rates of diabetes because uh, this is highly processed sugar. Um, and again, Australia apparently is not number one anymore, but there is uh, Brazil, Argentina. These are areas that do have affluence. Uh, probably the poorest of the people can't afford sugar. Um, and here we go. So we should in this day and age uh, talk about COVID and there is a huge connection between COVID mortality and being overweight as there is um, yeah, and the extra pounds looking at that with hospitalizations of COVID. Uh, and that is from eating this highly processed diet. And this is our cells of sugary drinks, uh, where we're finding the sugar. And again, it's men in Brazil eat tons of highly processed sugar and the lowest rates of sugar consumption. But look at that at the bottom of the chart, India, Indonesia. Uh, uh, women in China, apparently, in the rural parts of China. Um, so this is just a really cute pie graph. That's why I picked it. It's missing actually one of, um, I think it's actually number three or five, but the seventh leading cause of death in the United States is diabetes that may have moved up, um, but I'm not sure. This one's interesting because they put stroke and heart um, disease separate. So I think when they're saying heart disease is number one, um, that is just looking at cardiac arrest uh, and cancer. And, and the one that is missing from this is uh, doctor-induced deaths. So the wrong prescription. Um, and so my mom ended up in the hospital twice in the past decade, in the past five years, um, because the doctor gave her the wrong medication. Uh, she's she's thriving both times I went there to take care of her and I have that blessing um, of also being calm when I'm taking care of people. So these are some estimates. These are from Dr. Greger's book. Uh, 79 million US adults have prediabetes. Numbers are higher than this. This is from at least um, before COVID. Uh, so several years ago, and over a third of adults, uh, it's it's now estimated by 2030. 
So this was about a decade ago, they're estimating 2050, and it's now estimated by 2030, half of the US uh, could be diabetic, but we can, it's, it's like not a lifelong diagnosis, actually. There is a different viewpoint that is out there that we're viewing diabetes incorrectly. We're viewing all of this stuff incorrectly um, and that our bodies can heal when given the chance. Uh, the thing that is very sad and that most people don't realize that the people are dying not from diabetes, but from related diseases of heart disease and stroke. So some of this is because uncontrolled blood sugar will start scarring all the organs in your body, including your heart. Um, so absolutely, you do need to get to where it's controllable. And insulin is something that can do that, but insulin has side effects. Uh, but most people are not put on insulin. Most people are type two diabetes. Uh, and so they give them other medication and um, yeah. People who are have high blood sugar have double the rates of heart disease uh, and also cancer. Cancer loves sugar. And so if you have all the sugar floating around your your bloodstream, and again, it's their, their pancreas is producing insulin, but the sugar is not getting into the cells. Uh, so the medications that they give, and I apologize, I can't remember the names of all, metformin uh, and glipizide, and there's another one, uh, that the medications actually increase your rates of kidney and heart disease. Uh, studies have shown prediabetes, diabetes, can be prevented and reversed and could we say cured um so the again the the people whose pancreas is not producing the insulin that is a question that of course we want to keep it monitored um is a virus uh covid was manufactured to have um receptors to go after your pancreas and people in which that's their Achilles heel. There's lots of data out there in other countries, not in the US. Um, the other one was Epstein-Barr. So mononucleosis uh, was a virus that actually went after people's pancreas. And a lot of people after having mono actually ended up with diabetes. Uh, and then they were on insulin. Insulin is this amazing uh, hormone. And we we are able to treat people so they can live a normal life or right that they can they can still thrive but we do need to watch our diet but most people like 95 98 percent of the people they're not at that point they actually their pancreas can produce insulin their liver and it's that they're not eating right uh and so need to lose weight the same for blood pressure uh, you need to be active, not overactive, correct amount of activity, which is different for everyone. And you need to eat real food and more plants, more fiber. Uh, and so you have that choice. Do you want to be somebody who's constantly checking your blood sugar? Do you want to get to the point where you are not? Again, this is talking about the type 2 diabetes. So is it too drastic for me to say you can't eat animal products? Where are you going to get your protein? There's protein in plants. Or is it more drastic to implant a pump? Um, I don't know. And so in 1964, it was too drastic. People were saying when the Surgeon General stated smoking is bad for you, people said, no, you can't tell us that our cigarettes are bad for us. I'm saying, I mean, chicken might be bad for you. I'm recording. So degenerative diseases linked to simple and refined carbs. Doesn't that look gorgeous? So if your grandmother is having her birthday and she's 85, absolutely go celebrate. Don't tell them all, hey, you can't eat that. Go ahead, have your piece of cake. You just can't do this every day or every week. This is like, and there are ways to make it healthy and still tastes just as good. And it's not with the no calorie sweeteners. Those are worse for you. So besides diabetes, heart disease, that's high blood pressure, cancer, cancer, cancer. Can't emphasize that enough. Can't say that enough. Cancer lives on sugar, period. 
uh, and that would be highly refined sugar. Uh, you actually see an increase in cholesterol. We'll talk about cholesterol, the cause of high cholesterol. This is all like backwards. We're saying, I'm saying diabetes is caused by high fat. And, I, and I'm saying high cholesterol is, is not caused by eating cholesterol. It's caused by eating highly refined sugars. It, the, like every, what? Uh, of course, having obesity, there's also that whole thing of the, the thin person who actually, they don't realize they have diabetes. Um, and that is something we'll talk about, skin issues. And that is the biggest thing that I hear when you make either, some of you will see it in just your first week of giving up the crap um, and starting to eat real food. And some of you, it takes two or three weeks, but every student emphasizes how much their skin starts to heal. And yeah, uh, anemia is related to eating this highly processed sugar diet, uh, bone loss. So I'm saying osteoporosis. I thought osteoporosis was related to not drinking milk. And I'm here, oh, just wait until we get to the protein talks. Tooth decay, of course, we all know that, especially those who are interested in dentistry. PMS C is, there's different types of PMS. And those of you who crave chocolate, uh, premenstrual, impotence um so we don't want the guys out there and cataracts absolutely eye health is related to eating highly refined food you need to eat real food so the when you your eyes will be so happy uh headaches and going through getting rid of the crap you're gonna go through headaches as your body is cleansing it is part of it persevere being lazy because you have no energy, because this is fast metabolism. All this highly processed is going to be absorbed fast. A huge increase in glucose, your body then absorbs it all because it thinks that you're going to get this kind of food for the next four to six hours because your food is supposed to be absorbed very low. Um, concentration means that you can't think clearly. And what do you think about it when people go in and they're taking a the test? They're sitting there with a the soda, they're they're smooth, whatever, they're they're high sugary intake coffees. The the right granola bars are high in sugar. That could be what your food label is you look for a week. Uh nervous, talkative, shy, aggressive, negative thoughts, everybody has their thing. Uh guys become more violent, women feel sorry for themselves. So there's a study that was done on uh, teenage boys who were sent away to those places where they were, uh, right, had done stuff. They weren't good. They misbehaved. We don't send them to jail. We send them to juvie or whatever they call it now. And they took away the soda machines and they took away the candy machines. And I was sitting there reading this article going, wait, these kids misbehaved and were giving them soda and candy. And instead they gave them like pretzels and popcorn. And what happened is there was no more violence at this detention center. Uh, I don't know how they can say your IQ decreases by 20 points for all the highly processed foods you eat, but somebody did. And this is a quote from a book. I can't remember which one, but a desire for only the sweet things in life is perfect. How it says that. I'm going to be talking about free radicals for the next right, nine weeks. Uh, and so I know some, many of you have never taken chemistry, but free radicals when an electron uh, is missing. And so sugar steals electrons from healthy cells. Um, and so you all, I just know, because people are like, what's a free radical? We're going to get into this. Um, I have better slides than these first few here. But it's our first introduction that sugar creates free radicals in your body. And so a way to think of it is if you if you take a bite of an apple and you put it down and you get distracted and you do stuff and you go back and look at the apple or a potato, you, you peel a potato and then you get distracted and you go back and look, it gets brown. That is called oxidation. That is oxygen going in and stealing electrons. And so if you left a, if you leave a Twinkie out, you can actually leave the Twinkie out for decades and nothing happens because there's nobody wants the electrons in the Twinkie. But sugar uh, sources of free radical, look, it gets to be number one. We want to blame um, chemicals and toxins. Oh, by the way, stress, stress should be up there as number one. 
So that means on the inside, you're stressed. This is awesome. So I apologize. There's no way I'm going to be able to record this without all these distractions. Uh, over exercising, smoking. And so it creates something. And again, I'll be getting back to this, which is called advanced glycation end product. And so glycoproteins uh, age. And we'll be talking about this throughout the term. Uh, is glycation means sugar. Uh, and so end product is a good thing. But again, our body heals. Uh, and so free radicals cause this. Um, and it's specifically having high sugar, high protein diet, which is what our highly processed food is doing, is creating these. And these cause everything. Um, so all the symptoms of diabetes, which is that scarring and stuff. And a lot of people don't know this is going on inside of them. And it's happening in young people. And I'm not talking about kids who are overweight. I'm talking about a lot of people are eating those highly processed protein drinks. All right. Sugar destroys your brain. And... Yeah, let's talk about this. We'll see the slide again because it's really important to come back to. Just eating commercial baked goods twice a week. There we go. The easy bake oven that my mom never bought for me, even though I kept begging for it, doubles our rates of depression. We have a mental health, like uh, mental health issues. Everybody. A lot of you comment in your, when you introduce yourself, how you've struggled with mental health um, and it's depression. And so turn off your cell phones and start eating real food. Start cooking. You have time to cook if you turn off your cell phone. Um, and so, oh, I hope I don't have to record this again because anyway, two commercial baked goods per week. Most people are eating two per day. You go through the go through Starbucks and they're like, hey, do you want one of these? And they pretend like it's healthy. It's not. When you walk in the grocery store, what's the first thing there? And everybody buys those, oh, those sugar cookies. Two per week, you have double the depression. There's a huge link. Doesn't mean you can never have a healthy treat. There are healthy ones. Um, and so there's a picture that shows the idea of a free radical. So those those green, red, or yellow dots are electrons. And so a healthy, stable molecule, a healthy, stable atom, a healthy, stable cell. Eight is the key, the octet rule for those of you who took chemistry. Uh, and what happens is the free radical is missing an electron and it takes an electron. Antioxidants. So most of us think about vitamins A, C, vitamin C. Uh, just eating real food is really high in antioxidants. It fills in missing. It has extra electrons to fill in. They are great. Um, so back to sugar. Sugar causes oxidative stress, the free radicals, which shrinks your brain. And sugar is highly addictive. It releases dopamine, the reward system in your brain, just like cocaine. There's a picture of the shrinking brain in the lower left-hand corner. I want my brain to be healthy, vibrant. Your brain heals. Your whole body heals. You got to get off the highly processed food. Take it a step at a time. Figure out what your thing that you're giving up. And then next, and you take it one step at a time. Um, so the picture in the upper right corner is the cocaine addict, as well as the sugar addict, which they're saying obesity uh, normal, we want that red activity, our dopamine is released, and somebody will eat sugar and becomes that sugar addict. The thing is, is you can overcome addiction. So we want to eat real food. I'm not saying this is the only thing you eat, but you need to eat more of it. We need to start incorporating it. So besides cutting out the crap, the best way to cut out the crap is you have to replace it with something. So if you start eating fruit, whatever your favorite fruit is, whatever you can get, then you're not going to eat. It's so easy to carry apples in your backpack. It's so easy. And by the way, supplements, all those supplements they want to tell you are antioxidants, they don't do it. Not like eating the apple a day does. 
And so here we go. This was a study, and I don't have a reference here, but on the well-being, the green is somebody who's eating their green, their plant-based diet, and the brown is the typical American diet that is based, highly processed, animal-based food. And there's no comparison. Uh, so we look at physical functioning, physical role limit, emotional. I, some of these I don't understand on the beige one. If we go all the way over to the right, depression. Beige diet is putting them on a negative score. That That's not good. That means they're being depressed. So this is looking at well-being. So the higher numbers mean you're doing well, your general health. Um, and so feeling fatigue doesn't mean the high green doesn't mean they're feeling fatigue. It means they're not. Their emotional health is in good place. Um, and so the hidden sugars, uh, we all know it's in the soda, but, and then people will say, well, I get multigrain cereal and there's not a lot of sugar in there. Um, it's highly processed and it's more, it's in the yogurt, yogurts. Maybe that's going to be the thing you need to look at. So what are you doing for this weekly challenge is for seven days, you are cutting out your biggest sugar go-to. So you may have already for the past week and you can keep going or you might be like, no, there is something else I should do. Uh, or you may have, right, whatever it is. So your biggest source of ultra processed or processed sugar, I'll talk about this more in the next le lecture. So it could be Starbucks for a week. You really can think how much money you'll save. Pop-Tarts, donuts, Fruit Loops. Uh, it could be the yogurt, it could be ice cream. Um, yeah, sugary drinks while watching one of these documentaries on the next slide. Uh, and so you wanna be, yeah, yeah, and not doing the no sugary alternative. It says no sugar, it has a fake sugar and that's in the next talk. It's actually worse for you. Uh, fruit juices are not actually very good for you because there's no fiber there. And we'll be talking about that. So. Uh, it could be just candy. So I've had some students and that's what it was. They said, yeah, I eat candy, ate a lot of candy. And besides cutting a crap out, you're eating three pieces of fruit a day for seven days. So in 2010, Bill and Melinda were still together and they funded this study at the time. It was the biggest meta-analysis. Again, it's a computer analysis of every study that had been done on disease. And what they found was it was at the time, I don't know if it still is, the largest analysis of death and disease, the leading cause of disease and death in the US was diet. Because yes, yeah, smoking was no longer number one, it was diet. Because that's what our diet looks like, the beige diet of highly deep fried processed food. And the number one, Right. Well, this is that I'm saying Americans eat like they dress. Most people eat in like bland colors and they dress in bland colors. Uh, and right. So it could be the bacon, the hamburger, the chicken. There's Cookie Monster, beige or colors. It can be like all of us. And what they found in the study, and this blew me away. This was in Dr. Greger's first book, How Not to Die. And I just stopped and I had to go and look this stuff up. I was like, what? Uh, and it was not that we were eating highly processed. It was that we just were not eating enough fruit. We weren't getting the nutrients we need. We have to eat real food. So that's why you're eating real food. And as you start eating real food, you're going to have to cut something out because, right, your body can only hold so much food. And so beige versus color is what that's trying to say. And I've talked about this a number of times already that the sugar is bound to the fiber in fruit. So even though fruit has gotten a bad name saying it's high in sugar, when you analyze stuff in a test tube, it's very different than what it is when you're eating it. When you're eating an apple, there's sugar is actually bound to the fiber and at least half of that sugar never gets absorbed by you. It actually goes through and feeds your microbiome, the bacteria that it wants it. It's healthy bacteria and it makes the nutrients that your body needs. The fiber again is also, so we have slower absorbed and slows down everything. So we don't get this fast rush 
of sugar like you get when you eat candy. When you eat a fiber one bar, you actually get a fast flush because the fiber is not bound like it should be. So slowing absorption and then speeding up the rest. You repair your DNA. My next slide, I think, is on that. There we go. The happy cookie monster. And that's a picture, uh, Karelian photography. So it was this guy, and he took pictures of the vibrations, the energy field coming off of an apple versus a piece of meat, which is quite different. It's up to you if you believe in it or not. We are vibrational. And our food is too. So, uh, fruit repairs your DNA. It's DNA. We want. We don't want our DNA to look like it does there. That ladder, it's all broken. And that's actually a cement mixer that somebody made into a strawberry house. It's my dream house. Uh, berries, especially, are really high in antioxidants. They go in and fix in the free radical damage. Uh, and there we go. I'm a chemist. Lots of polyphenols. We'll actually come and talk about this the week we talk about the rainbows on uh, anthocyanins. And so you want to eat colorful. You want to eat different types of fruit or you can stick to the same one. Three pieces a day. I know. So that could be three kiwis a day. Um, and you guys just remember you're picking a topic. So it could be kiwis. You could be like, I love kiwis. Kiwis, somebody did a study and they found it actually reduced DNA damage. Cut it in half. It's really high in vitamin C and other stuff. And it also, not only does it repair the damage, it's repairing it because it's increasing your natural repair activity of DNA in your body. Uh, carrots, so although not a fruit, uh, avocados are considered a fruit, by the way. Tomatoes are considered a fruit. And believe it or not, cucumbers are. You can Google what is a fruit. And I'm okay with those things. If you're somebody who's like, I don't like apples. Oh, I can do tomatoes. Okay. Oh, I like cucumbers. Um, so carrots, this is just eating five per day for two weeks. Carrots are really high in carotenoids, uh, repaired DNA, the existing damage that was there. And lycopenes are in anything that's red. Uh, so watermelon, tomatoes, guava, grapefruit. Um, and there's the molecule. And so when you guys pick your topic, a lot of people end up picking a fruit topic because this is my talk about fruit, um, you do want to talk, find the molecule in there. And I know a lot of you haven't had chemistry, but molecules really aren't scary. You just Google the name. Anyway, lycopene is really good to help protect you from damage from the sun. And that is apparently oils also have some super molecule and I don't remember what it was. I gave that book to a former student. And so I have to look it up. Uh, berries. So I have students, berries, that's, they're filled with these polyphenols, um, just vibrant antioxidants. Uh, the skin is like that to attract insects that they spread the seeds. And which one is the best berry? Well, we have strawberries, right? We have blueberries, make wonderful, right? You can make smoothies. You don't have to eat these whole, you can make them into smoothies every day have your servings. Uh, blackberries. So some people will say, oh, the darker, the darker. Actually, all berries. You, whatever is in my smoothie that day, I make a smoothie every day. Um, I, I read a, a website and that's what I go by. It's the 111. So if you do a cup of whatever fruit, berries, I just buy frozen ones, a cup of berries, a cup of greens. So I put kale uh, and then a cup of liquid. Um, and then I'll sometimes throw a whole date in there, depending on what my type of fruit is, because some of them are, I guess, it depends on my mode. Um, so you also are doing a healthy 33-day challenge. And so if you haven't started this, um, you can be cutting your big crap for 33 days. So maybe you cut out sugar the first week, your candy, and you're going to keep going with that. Uh, so sure, you can double dip. Um, you can change what you did the first week and just start counting your 33 days. You can decide, hey, I really like this, eating three pieces of fruit a day. Uh, and you can go for that. You can do both, cut crap and eat three pieces of food. You can eat a salad. That's going to be week three's seven-day challenge is eat a salad every day. Um, at the end of 33 days, you'll tell me what you did, why you did it, how it went. And all right, 
Uh, and that's Joey saying everything went great. Just a reminder, you always have a choice. Do two changes so you can cut the crap. What's your crap? Is it the ramen? <laughs> I say that. Uh, is it the Red Hot Cheetos? And you're not replacing one crap with a different crap. Is it you're going to give up dessert, like the highly processed dessert? Is it you're going to give up candy for a month? Is it you're going to give up Starbucks for a month? Are you going to give up fast food for a month? And why I'm saying two changes is if you don't replace it with something healthy. So, right. Um, that's curry because I love making curries. So eating more vegetables, eating three pieces of fruit a day. Uh, when you're saying eating more vegetables, you're going to have to be more specific than that. Uh, this is actually a poem that was written by one of my students. And she um, was in my class online on Zoom. And the picture, she worked at um, Kaiser as a nurse. And she was in my class because she was an LPN going back for her RN. And so the door at the drawer at the top, nurses, for some reason, everybody's stressed. Teachers are stressed. Everybody's stressed. And so her drawer was like, this is why she was stressed. And so when she was having one of those days of dealing with patients and coworkers, she would reach in her drawer and have her Snickers. You know, they're bite-sized Snickers. It's okay. Or a Sour Patch. And by the end of two months in my class, Notice this is not in her drawer, it's on the table. And what it was is she started bringing in fruit and bringing it in for her colleagues, bringing it in to share and they started bringing it in. And everybody in her group, I had another gal who told the story uh, and, and she was doing this and everybody, and they would just be in the break room all laughing and joking and and the attitude change but she wrote a poem that went with it i'm going to read it to you because i love it red blue orange and green it was like nothing i'd ever seen miss banana invited me to meet her friends is this the place where true health begins i met miss strawberry mr apple and more the beauty and vibrance is something i adore and yes it has a dr seuss rhyme one bite was all it took my mind felt clear my body felt good something I thought only chocolate could. I'm happy to say I conquered my 30 day, but on day 30, Kit Kat came out to play. And this will happen to all of you. At the end of 30 days, you're going to say, I'm just going to go and try it again. It was bittersweet, but the reminiscing didn't last. That milk chocolate is a thing of the past. I hold my head high and give a humble salute to my new BFFs who call themselves fruit. And the best part about the story is she had, I believe, four children and her selfies started including her whole family. And they would be in the kitchen cooking together, something they had never done of whatever the weekly, it wasn't this class, it was my biochem class. So it was labs that they would have to do. And apparently I'm going to talk about high fructose corn syrup. This was in the next slideshow, but we will mention that. So uh, HFCS, so high fructose corn syrup, it's a liquid. It's highly processing corn. Um, and it was in the late 70s, they figured out how to do this. Uh, and that was the peak was in 1999. And then they started calling it different things. So you'll find it on the labels, uh, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. You'll find it on a lot of labels three ways, especially on things that are liquidy or have a viscousness to them because this was a liquid. It's extremely soluble, whereas table sugar is a solid. Um, it actually was lower again. And so what we see is the amount of added sweeteners has not changed. It was the type of sweetener. Uh, and we have different names for them. And that's my next slide. So this is a study. I had a student who did high fructose corn syrup as their um, paper and uh, this was the study he quoted, which is when they fed rats, rats live about two years. I think they might actually live longer. Uh, when they fed them high, fruit corn, high fructose corn syrup every day, they died within five weeks. And that's what a lot of people, like our lifespan's longer than two years. But if you're eating high fructose corn syrup, and a lot of people, you are in that stuff, that flavoring for your coffee. Um, and so it is one of, the biggest culprits behind our increase in obesity, 
because of how we process fructose. So glucose gets a really bad name because we measure blood glucose. Fructose is actually much, much worse, but we don't measure blood fructose levels. It causes a lot more damage than glucose does. Uh, and so it's something called fructolysis. So the lysis means how fructose is broken down by our body. And so fructo fructose uh, gets broken down into pyruvate and then your body is supposed to use it. The only place fructose can be processed is in your liver. So all the fructose that comes into your body has to go to the liver. And the liver is the only organ, only cells in your body that can deal with it. Glucose, on the other hand, pretty much every cell in your body can take in glucose. So fruit is high in fructose. However, that fructose is mostly going through and feeding your microbiome, which can deal with it. So fruit is very different. Uh, this is the thing that's interesting. Honey is also very high in fructose. It's equal amounts of fructose and glucose. And for some reason, when you take it in as honey or fruit, uh, honey here I mentioned because there's no fiber, so all of it's going to be absorbed, that it is packaged vibrationally is the only way I can explain it. And your liver says, hello, and stores it, changes it into glucose and stores it as glycogen for later use. It knows what to do. The weird part is when you're getting it processed as corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, once stuff has been started to be processed as just fructose added, uh, as honey, not raw honey, blah, 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 it gets to your liver and your liver is like, what is this? And makes it into TG means fat, triglycerides. So why? It's the exact same molecule. Like that's what people would say. It's the exact same molecule. It's the same honey or high fructose corn syrup. They're the same molecule. They're not. Once we start processing, your body goes, what the heck is this? And your liver turns it into fat and sends it out for storage. And as I mentioned, fructose actually causes more damage to your red blood cells, actually quite a bit of more damage. There we go, seven times more. Um, so you've probably all heard of HbA1c, right? You get that measure to see that is what glucose attacks. It's, that's, so Hb is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a huge protein. And it's actually a different place that's attacked by the fructose. The, the test is would be extremely expensive to get done. But when they do do it, um, the fructose is the one that's causing the damage that ends up being the really damaging part of diabetes, but we don't measure blood fructose levels. We're measuring blood glucose levels, something to ponder. Um, and there we go. So you get the corn and as they process the corn more, you're making it a little bit higher, a little bit higher uh, fructose. So in the corn, naturally there's fructose and glucose. Um, packaged, Mother Nature knows what to do with it. And the fructose is actually sweeter. It's why honey is so sweet because it has fructose. It's why um, fruit is so sweet. But again, when it's packaged by Mother Nature, your body deals with it and it doesn't cause the damage. It's when it's been processed that it becomes so damaging. And the only explanation I can give is that processing changes it. It's still fructose, but there's more to us than just that molecule. And so these are things. So besides gaining weight, because the, the liver is just like changing all that fructose and, and change the fat, and it just sends it out and stores it. Uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, high fat, right? So again, taking in carbohydrate, not all carbs are the same. So whole food carbs are going to have fiber with them uh, and your body knows how to use them. Uh, gout, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, we'll talk about that. Uh, kidney stones. So yeah, children drinking soda end up with alcoholic liver, the same as alcoholics. We just call it non-alcoholic liver disease. It's the exact same thing. 
Um, and the way you treat it is you change their diet. There's other things too. It's, it's, um, and this is just looking at the rates of how many children it's just skyrocketing. This is when pro it's, it's, we want to say this is when high fructose corn syrup in the late seventies, that's when obesity starts skyrocketing. That's also when soda starts being like every meal, every, every kid's eating it, drinking it every day. Um, but it's not just high fructose corn syrup. So we'll, we'll be taking this one week at a time and seeing the changes. They stop eating fruit. So that's why you're going to eat fruit and find the fruit that you love. But if I had a student, she'd never had an apple. She's like, I said, there's so many types of apples. Go and get one, like get four different types, get one of each type, find the one you like, and then go back. Um, it's pink ladies. That's my bliss point and absolutely love them and thrilled that apparently other people like them because I'm finding them more in the stores. Um, yeah, much more than Fuji or Gala. I just, that's my bliss point. Uh, high fructose corn syrups in everything is processed. And this is, again, not the correlation with high fructose corn syrup and obesity. But as high fructose corn syrup has decreased, we're still seeing increases in obesity. So why that? Uh, and our inner cities, they don't have access to fresh food. They're eating this highly processed food that high in oxidized oils, high in high fructose corn syrup and other sugars. Um, and so the correlation. So hidden sugars, I promised I would show this and find different slides like this. There are so many different names. And again, high fructose corn syrup. So whenever you see the ending O-S-E on a label, that's a sugar. But they give it all different ways of seeing it. So they don't have to list it first. Um, and syrups, all the different types of syrups. Uh, so sucrose is the table sugar. It's made up of the, the two pictures there. So there's a hexagon over a pentagon. It's, it's a disaccharide. It's two sugars put together. It is uh, glucose and fructose together. So inverted sugar, because you'll find this on the label. I showed it last week with, I think, the Oreos. Is This is flipped. So the, the pentagon's on top. But that's man-made. That does not exist in nature. And so... That way they don't have to list it as this is how much sugar we can flip it. And uh, yeah. Anyway, there's a picture of what your beets look like. Very different from regular beets, but beets are amazing. Superfood. They really are. So make sure you do that as their topic. Um, so you get table sugar either from sugar beets or sugar cane. And it's made up of these two. And again, the OS, OSC just means it's a, it's a carbohydrate. Um, and that's sugar cane. Um, and it's extremely refined. And this is actually a picture from advertisement from uh, the sugar industry. And my mom, we used to put sugar on our grapefruit. And so I laughed. But the kid in the picture, they're showing he's like hyperactive from eating their product. Uh, all right. So your homework uh, for week two. Your homework is always due on Thursday by midnight. Uh, you can actually... This is going to be cut and pasted from there. I listed on Blackboard. And so what a lot of students did is they would just copy it. You can actually highlight it on Blackboard and copy it into like a Word document or onto your pad or whatever you write on. Uh, and you can type it or you can just answer the questions as one, two, three, four, five. So you guys this week are, we're going to be evaluating food labels for the next couple of weeks. Specifically this week, you're going to find two food labels in your home, or you might have to go to your friend's house if you're somebody who really already eats perfectly, um, or you can go to the store and find two things that are, right, that you've already cleaned out your house. You were so inspired by my first week. So two food labels. So you can pick Fruit Loops. You can go to the store and do this and take a picture. You don't even have to go to the store. You can just ask Google food label for Fruit Loops. And what you're looking at specifically this week is carbohydrates, since that is our topic. And you're looking on the label, it will have numbers. So you're looking at sugar and fiber. Uh, the ratio of the two is actually important. And so I think it's like once you get above a five to one ratio, that's like really bad. They should also say how much added sugar. So how much of that sugar is added. Uh, and then you have to look down at the small print where they list everything. 
And I want you to write down all the different ways you're finding sugar. Um, and it's going to be hidden in these fancy words like dextrose, anything that ends with O-S-E. Um, and anything that ends with O-L, those are some of the fake sugars. And not just evaluating the food label, but I would like you to write a few sentences about your thoughts of that food label, like, oh, it's not bad at all. Um, again, granola bars, if you eat any kind of power bars or granola bars, um, could be a liquid thing. So liquid ones, of course, are going to have no fiber at all. But all right, a second part. So there you go. It's going to be processed food. Um, and pick something you know is going to be something you know you need to be evaluating. Right. Because you want to be, this is supposed to be inspiring you. All right, you're also going to write then a paragraph uh, from my talk from last week and week one is a calorie calorie. So there's no right or wrong answer here. I mean, every answer is correct. There's no wrong answer. I just want you to be thoughtful. And it could be that you say, yes, I absolutely believe calories count, that you should be counting your calories. Or you could be like, well, now I'm thinking about this. Um, that's kind of up to you. You can doodle as well, but you wanna write a paragraph is more than one or two sentences. So your thoughts on that. And then also question number three is a carbohydrate, a carbohydrate. So um, we'll be talking more about fiber and other carbs in the next lecture. There's two parts to this, but is a carbohydrate a carbohydrate? And again, a thoughtful paragraph, no wrong answer here, only a thoughtful answer. So your thoughts. Are all carbs the same? So is carbs in that processed food that those rats are sitting there by the same as carbs in an apple? And I want you to write down a question you might have for me. So what's a question from this first two weeks of class that you're pondering, or before you came into this class, a question that you might be thinking about, about carbohydrates or about calories? Related nutritional question. Um, all right, and just a reminder, attendance is part of your grade. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you come in after I did attendance, which sometimes is a minute before class starts, make sure before you leave, you come down and make sure I got you because here in the first two, three weeks, I'm still getting your names. And so in the first week, there were some of you, I know you came in late and I didn't do attendance again. And so that's kind of on you to come down and say, hey, I walked in late. Did you get me? I, or I didn't walk in late. I think, I don't know if you got me on attendance. Um, again, that's that picture I already showed. I think I'm in the wrong. There we go. This is last slide. Is um, So your homework is those five questions that's due on Thursday with the seven day challenges that you're eating fruit, you're cutting the crap, that can also become part of your 33 days or you can, it talks about all those things. But in your seven day challenge for this week, last week was the broccoli, this week is eating fruit and cutting crap still. Um, you're also making a healthy recipe with the fruit and you're watching one of these documentaries. And then, and this is due on Mondays or Tuesdays, whichever day we have class. Um, and you're gonna write about the documentary and it gives you all this on there. Uh, Sugar Coated is more conspiracy one. Uh, King Corn, phenomenal, awesome documentary about how what happens to the corn in the cornfield. The Bitter Truth About Sugar, this is amazing. Um, if you haven't had chemistry, I'm not talking about biochemistry, but chemistry, um, this one might be tough, he, he's, he's awesome. He's actually, I think, in every one of these documentaries, the doctor in this. Um, but those who had biochemistry with me, this showed up as an assignment. Please pick one that you haven't watched. Um, I've watched actually all of these, and they're awesome. Fed Up is more newsy. Uh, you can find all of these. I, I should have made the PDF, should have a hot link to each one of these. Um, but if it doesn't, please ask. Um, because I don't have Netflix, so I'm not wanting you to pay for any of these, but you can definitely find, um, if not every one of these, several of these. So you're just picking one of them. That sugar film is funny. And so a lot of people pick that one. Um, and your thoughts, were you inspired? Uh, like I had one guy and he was watching a sugar film and then he was drinking 
his lemonade and he says he's watching the movie he like sat back and he looked at the label on his lemonade and said holy moly so anyway your thoughts and we'll be starting the next lecture talking about lactose it will be the milk lecture uh in the meantime have a wonderful day and i will see you soon bye bye